of God in song. Amen. Let us pray. God Almighty, open up our hearts and our minds that we can truly hear you and understand what it is that uh, you say, you desire to say to us even now. May we, O oh God, know that uh, as this man speaks, dear God, that he speaks truly as an oracle, as a witness, that only to share a testimony that your God has been so good. So bless this word, bless it to all of us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Most of us know the story of the Hebrew children crossing the Red Sea. But not many of us are even aware that there was a second crossing, not the crossing of the Red Sea. But later on, there was the crossing of the Jordan River. Permit me to share that uh, story with you very quickly. It's from uh, the book of Joshua, uh, chapter 3, and verses 11 to 17. I'll just share that with you really quickly. Uh, verse 11 begins, look, the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. Choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. The priests will carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth. As soon as their feet touch the water, the flow of the water will be cut off upstream and the river will stand up like a wall. So the people left their camp to cross the Jordan and the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. It was the harvest season and thus the Jordan was overflowing its banks. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the Ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above that point began backing up a great distance away at a, at a town called Adam, which is near Zarathon. And the water below that point flowed on to the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. Then all the people crossed over near the town of Jericho. Meanwhile, the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant stood on dry ground in the middle of the riverbed as the people passed by. They waited there until the whole nation of Israel had crossed the Jordan on dry ground. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. After God had delivered them out of Egypt and brought them across the Red Sea, the Hebrew people had a breakdown in their faith. They had a faith failure or as we more commonly say, a crisis of faith. As a result, uh, their doubt, uh, as a result of their doubt, they forfeited uh, their promise and was made to wander in the wilderness. Now, let's understand that they were still God's people. He cared for them and entrusted them and sustained them for 40 years in the wilderness, literally until all of the doubters all of the naysayers died off. And I want to talk today to anybody who knows that they have a destiny over their lives. Anyone knows that God has a reason and a purpose for their existence. I want to talk today to anyone who wants everything that God has ordained for their life and refuse to let go, to give in or to give up. I want to talk today if you have a fight in your spirit, the kind of fight that Caleb, who in Joshua 14 and verse 12, at the age of 85 years old, declared, give me my mountain. I want to talk today um, to you if you want what God has promised you. I want to talk to you today if you refuse to settle to, for, for, for less than what God said that you can have. I want to talk to somebody today who knows that the promises of God are yea and amen. I want to talk to someone who has made up their mind that whatever it costs, they're going to get what God has promised to them. But first of all, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't tell you that every promise comes with a price. Because the reality is there is no victory without a fight. There is no testimony without a test. There is uh, no healing without a sickness. There is no deliverance without a fire or a problem. There is no crown without a cross. My brothers and sisters, there is no resurrection without a crucifixion. 
There is something you have to go through to get to your promise. Before Joseph went to the palace, he went to the pit and he went to the prison. Before Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were promoted, they went through the fiery furnaces, furnace. And between the children of Israel and their inheritance, even right now, after four zero, 40 years, there was a river called Jordan. Jordan means descender or the one that takes you down. That, that, that's what Jordan intends to do. It intends to take you down, to kill your dream, to drown your faith. You may not quite agree with me, but there is a Jordan for every single one of us. Your Jordan may be different from mine, but what is the same is the fact that it stands between our promise and our destiny. And the only way you and I can get through this river, this Jordan, is by faith. After 40 years in the wilderness, the children of Israel stood at the edge of a raging Jordan River. It was, as the scripture says, at its flood stage. But here comes Joshua. And Joshua looks at his priests. They are carrying the ark, the ark of the covenant. And he gives them what they under any circumstances would be a very strange command. It would be a very strange order. He says, step into the water. Step into the water. Let me set the stage for you. Again, the, the Jordan River is at flood stage. And Jordan comes, Joshua, sorry, comes at, the, at this particular point in, the, in their lives when if they once they stepped into that water now i want us i want us to say something this is not the red sea when we read and understand what the red sea is the red sea does not compare in any way to the jordan river the jordan river was a deep flowing river and joshua comes to them when this river is at its height it is it's overflowing its bank and Joshua says, step into the water. He says, start moving in that direction because God says, God has promised you that the promised land, if you step into the water, it's been 40 years. Why should we now put our lives at risk? It's been 40 years and we've looked beyond the river. We've seen the promised land. We just have not gotten there. And now after 40 years, you're saying, step into the water. I want to say to somebody today, it's time to step into the water. I don't know how long you've been looking at the promises of God. I don't know how long you've been you know, skirting around the promises of God. It could be 40 years, but I'm saying to you, it's time to step into the water. It's time to step into your miracle. You can't go by what you're seeing or what you're hearing or what you're feeling, or what other people are saying. You've got to go by what God is saying. You can't go by what your mind is saying. You can't go by how much it costs or what the economy is saying. You have to move because God says move. Step into your miracle. You can't wait until you see a break in the waves. You can't wait until it makes sense or it feels good or emotionally you're okay with it. You can't wait until you see, literally see the waters open in front of you. God is saying to somebody today, it's time to take off the training wheels. It's time to step into your miracle. It's time to walk by faith and not by sight. It is time, my brothers and sisters, to move from I hope so, to I know so. In other words, it's time to get your feet wet. You've got to have enough vision and enough faith in God to get off of your blessed assurance and step into your miracle. Somebody say amen. I know it sounds crazy. I know it may not make sense. I know this may this, this Jordan, maybe your Jordan is at its flood stage. And I know that people are saying to you, it won't work. And I know that you feel that your circumstances against you are against you and the odds 
are against you. I know you feel that people are against you, but I remind you today, like it said in Genesis 50 and verse 20, they meant it for evil against you, but God meant it for good. It doesn't matter. It, it, it really doesn't matter who or what is standing in your way, because if God is for you, who can be against you? Stephen Covey, one of the most prolific writers um, of this day, he says, if you always do what you've always done, then, you've, then you'll always get what you've always got. Let me say that again. If you always do what you've always done, then you will always get what you've always got. I'm saying to somebody today, it's time to step into your miracle. I, I just wanna stop right here and ask you, how long are you going to keep doing what doesn't work? How long are you going to keep trying to make something happen before you turn it over to God and do it God's way? The Psalmist says, weeping may endure for the night. If you know that you've been weeping and you've been weeping and you've been weeping, there has to be something beyond the weeping. There has to be something beyond the tears. And that Psalmist says, joy comes in the morning. How long have you been in the night? How long have you been going through the night? Some things got to give. I wanna to declare to somebody today, you are one step away from your miracle. The priest could have said, no, the water is too rough. The, tree, the priest could have said, no, the water is too deep. The, the priest could have declared, you're fine, you know, you know, Joshua, if you want to do this, you got to do this yourself. Not, not me, not I, I'm not doing this because the circumstances say it doesn't make sense. But they listened. They followed Joshua and they took that step, one step. And sometimes that's all it takes to make a difference in your life. You may be one step away from your miracle. You may literally be one step away from your breakthrough. You may be one step away from your blessing, but you're not taking that step. You've put in your time in the night, your time of toiling and trying and praying and confessing and waiting and watching. And, 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 and I just came to tell you, you are one step away from what, from what you've been praying for. You are one step away from what you've been believing for. You are one step away from what you've been hoping for. You are one step away from your miracle. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he will do it. Let me, let me stop right. If he said it, he will do it. If he had spoken, God's word is good. If he had spoken it, he will make it good. Watch this. As soon as the, feet, the, the priest's feet touched the water, the scripture says the waters rolled back. I want you to picture that. I want you to picture every time um, I, I, I think of the Red Sea and I think of the crossing of the Jordan, there, there, there is a, um, a, a cartoon where um, they, they're showing them walking through the water and they, there's the walls of water standing um, on the right side and on the left and as they're walking through and I always uh, I find it so um, amusing if you wish it's, I think it's a cartoon entitled Prince of Egypt and I always find it so amusing as they're walking through and they show you on one side they show you the, the, the whales and the fish they're trying to get through but not even them could cross through because God created this wall the waters were rolled back and the, they, as they walked, the water literally fled before them. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. There are some things 
that have been chasing you. There are things that have been threatening to drown you and take you under. My brothers and sisters, there's, there may be something that is standing right now in the way of your destin destiny. It may be debt. And when I say debt, I don't mean D-E-A-T-H. I mean D-E-B-T. And a matter of fact, it could be both. It may be sickness. It may be fear. It may be a bad relationship. I don't know what is chasing you or what is standing in your way, but, but, but there is a turnaround in the atmosphere today. I don't know how you feel. I, somehow as I came into the year 2021, I felt this atmosphere, this air, this turnaround that God, the literally, I've been using the term a lot, uh, flip the script. I think that God is about to flip the script for us. And I think he's about to flip the script for you. How long are you going to continue in the night? Weeping may endure for a night. Where's your joy? That joy has to come. My brothers and sisters, listen to me. That which has been running after you is going to be running from you. And, and let me say that again. That this is what God is declaring. That which is running has been running after you, has been chasing you, that has had you so afraid and you've been moving and walking and functioning in trepidation. I'm saying to you, it is going to run from you, but you have got to step into your miracle. You've got to stop where you are, turn around, face whatever it is, and, and, and in faith, you've got to initiate you have got to initiate your miracle. I'm trying to tell somebody today, one step can turn your situation around. One step can put you in charge. You know how long you've been following behind everybody. They have been the ones telling you what to do. Every circumstance, every situation has been dictating how you move. It's time for you to take charge. Step into your miracle. One step can turn your situation in, in, into a miracle. One step can initiate your miracle. I don't know. I couldn't sit here today and say that I know what Jordan you may be facing today. And I don't know what that one step is that you need to take. But if you will obey God and take that step, your Jordan is going to part for you. Poverty and lack, sickness and disease, hopefulness and discouragement, worry and anxiety, fear and confusion. My brothers and sisters, all of these things will flee from you. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 7 says, The Lord... Let me say that again, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 7. And you need to write this down, you need to look it up, you need to hear what it is saying. It says, the Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against you one way, but they shall flee from you seven ways. Hallelujah. The miracle is not in the knowing or even the believing. The miracle is in the doing. Take that step. I don't know who this message is specifically today for, but I know it's for somebody. When Ezekiel opened the Lord and start, uh, obeyed the Lord and, and started prophesying over those dry bones, we know the story, the valley of the dry bones. It wasn't until Ezekiel obeyed the Lord and prophesied that the dry bone, the bones and things started changing. It was a process that continued um, until the, the, the bones had skin and muscle. Let me hear somebody say, it is a process. You've got to go through the process to make progress. So tell yourself today or tell your neighbor, I'm ready to make process. I'm ready to start the process and I'm ready to make progress. The Bible says that the priests that were bearing the ark kept moving until they were standing in the middle of the Jordan River. 
So I want to encourage somebody today. Keep moving. Keep praying. Keep sowing. Keep going to church. Keep confessing. Keep tithing. Keep believing. Keep praising. Even when you don't feel like it. And let's be honest, sometimes we don't feel like it. But even when we don't feel like it, we've got to take that step. Get your feet wet. Step into your miracle. The Bible says the priests that were bearing the ark stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. There they were. Where it would seem a few moments ago impossible to go. And bear in mind, my brothers and sisters, they, did, they weren't just walking. They, weren't, they didn't swim across. They walked on dry land. Bear in mind, they were also carrying on their shoulders the Ark of the Covenant. And they crossed the Jordan. Here they are now in the middle doing where it was impossible to go, doing <clears throat> what was impossible to do. And I'm saying somebody hearing my voice today needs to get ready to do what everyone else is going to consider impossible. There will be lots of naysayers. People will quicker tell you you can't do it before they will tell you you can do it. People will find everything wrong with what you're doing before they will tell you what is right with what you're doing. You've got to get ready to go where all the people are saying it is impossible to go. You, you, you've got to get ready to do what they're saying is impossible to do, to do. Remind me, allow me to remind somebody today that Luke 18 and verse 27 says, the things that are impossible with people are possible with God. You see, my brothers and sisters, I'm just one of those crazy Christians who are crazy enough to believe that with God, all things are possible. I'm, I'm just one of those crazy Christians. And maybe I'm the only one, and I hope that somebody else is today, but I'm, I am one of those who believe that with God, all things are possible. While the priests were there praising God in the middle of their Jordan and lifting God up in the midst of their trial, approximately, the history books tell us, approximately three million people came through. I want to point something out. Whenever the Ark of the Covenant was on the move, the priests and the workers in the temple were dancing and praising God. I want us to grasp that. So paint this, let me paint this picture for you. Not only were there four or five priests carrying the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant, not only were there four or five priests standing in the middle of the Jordan with the, 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 the ark, but there were dozens of other priests and, and temple workers dancing and praising God. And I want to say to somebody today, I want to let you know that while you praise God, somebody is watching you. While you are praising God, somebody is hearing you. Somebody is coming through or going through on your praise. Somebody that wasn't going to make it is going to make it because you praise God in the middle of your job. That's your testimony. That's why it's so important for us to lift him up and praise God. To, and praise God and magnify him even when we're in our Jordan, even when we're in the prison, in the lion's den, in the fiery furnace. Somebody's life depends on it. Lift God up. Anybody can praise God after Jordan. Anybody can praise God post Jordan, post the lion's den, after the fiery furnace after the prison, after the fact. But there is something about a midway praise. There's something about a praise in the midnight. There is something about a middle way praise that gets God's attention and, and breaks things open. Joshua ele erected a pillar of stones in the midst of the Jordan. He had time that he could actually build a temple to God in the midst of the Jordan on dry ground. This was Joshua's going through it praise. I'm going through the worst trial of my life, 
but I'm going to praise God anyway. I'm going through hell in my finances, but I'm going to praise God anyway. I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death, but I'm going to praise God anyway. I'm going through a difficult time with my family or my job. They're trying, people are trying to destroy me, but I'm going to praise God Anyway, I am going to take that step. This is my testimony that God has been faithful and somebody else is going to come this way and in the middle of their fiery trial, they're going to see this pillar that we've set up, this pillar of praise, and it's going to remind them of the promises of God. It's going to remind them of their destiny. It's going to remind them of their faithfulness, of the faithfulness of God. It's going to tell them, that someone else has passed this way before them in the middle of the Jordan River and they did not drown. It's going to say to them, someone walked in this fire. Someone was cast into this fiery furnace and they did not burn up. Someone was cast into the lion's den and the lions didn't eat them. Someone was cast in the prison, but the prison walls couldn't hold them and somebody else would have made it. It's going to make it because of your praise. Praise God in the middle of your Jordan. Somebody, my brothers and sisters, is going to come out of your depression because of your praise. Somebody's being set free from a spirit of suicide even now because of your praise. Somebody's coming out of drugs because of your praise. Somebody's marriage is being restored because of your praise. Somebody's prodigal son or daughter is coming home because of your praise. And at midnight, the scripture says, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises unto the Lord and the prisoners heard them. It does not say the prisoners joined them. It says the prisoners heard them. It doesn't even say the prisoners enjoy the singing. We don't know if Paul and Silas, they could sing it. We don't know. Maybe they were, you know, it was some donkey bass. I don't know what they were singing. But this, 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 it says they were singing. Nobody joined them. They were just praising God. And suddenly there was an earthquake that should, shook the foundation of the prison. And every door. And every prisoner's chains were loose. I want you to grasp this church. It does not say, it does not say that Paul and Silas, that their chains, was, chains were loose. It said every prisoner and their bands and their chains were loose. You need to tell somebody when you see somebody, I am going to step into my miracle. I'm going to step into my promised land. I may have gone through, I may have to go through the Jordan, but while I'm going through, I'm gonna give God this praise break. This praise is for you. I love this part and I'm coming to the end here. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground. This is perhaps the greatest part of the miracle. Not just that they made it through, but that there was no evidence, no residue that they had been through, that they, that they didn't even have any mud, if you wish, between their toes. Just like the Hebrew boys, when they came out of the fiery furnace, their clothes were not burned, their hair was not singed, and there was not even the smell of smoke on them. I'm prophesying for somebody today. God is going to get you out. You're coming out. And when you get out, you're not going to even look like what you've been through. When you get out, there's not going to be even any evidence. Any evidence left of the hell that you went through. But you've got to take that step. You've got to step into the water. There's somebody today who's waiting, waiting to step in. You could be the key to someone else's miracle. You need to declare today, I am stepping into my miracle. I don't want you to miss your miracle. I don't, I don't, I, I don't want you to miss 
your blessing. I want to help you step into your miracle. I want to say to you, like Joshua said to the priest, I want to declare to us today, step into the water. Start moving in the direction of your promise. Again, I don't know who this message is for today. But as I started preparing it, I literally saw us as a church, collective church, taking that bold step forward and stepping into the promise of God. So Margaret, I want to challenge you today as a church, step into the water. As individuals, I want to challenge you today, step into your miracle. God is ready to part your Jordan, to remove the waters of your Jordan so that you could go into the direction that he promised you and so that you could enter your promised land. May God bless each of us as we step into our miracles. Amen.